Hey everyone, it's James again. We're here with the Pygon Bot development team. We've added a ton of search engines for you to be able to scrape. Uh, for years now, Pygon Bot has only primarily been focused on scraping Google. But as Google has become a little bit more strict and a little bit more difficult, requiring a little bit more investment in private dedicated proxies, you know, to be able to scrape a ton of data, we thought it was really important to add these other search engines to be able to harvest new information and, and data and make it a lot easier on you guys. And I will try to go through each one of these search engines uh, briefly to give you a little description on how to scrape them because some of them do scrape a little bit differently than uh, other ones. So anyways, you see it here. We have uh, Google.com. We have Yahoo.com. We have Bing.com, AOL.com, and YellowPages.com that we've added. Um, I know that uh, a lot of these are going to be pretty big as far as you guys being able to scrape because uh, there's just so many databases to be able to draw so much information on. Um, Anyways, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the search engines that we've added because they do scrape a little bit differently. And uh, you have to kind of understand the way that a search engine works. Um, we've made another video. You might want to check out our YouTube channel or our tutorial page to find it. It's called Everything You Should Know About Google in 15 Minutes. And it goes a little bit more in depth than I am in this video going to show you as far as how these different uh, search queries work with keywords and footprints and stuff like that. So what you'll do is obviously you'll choose the search engine that you want to scrape. And uh, let's say for the instance, you're going to scrape Google.com. Well, you also have two different options in the scraping module for how you want to scrape. You can either scrape with keywords with footprints or scrape keyword with no footprint. So what is the difference between those two? Very simple. Keyword with no footprint would be like if you went to Google.com and you wrote in SEO companies. and these would be the results that it would scrape essentially obviously the results may vary by your your region or the IP address that's making the hit onto Google but essentially these are the results that you would get now if you chose the option to scrape with the keyword with footprints you have the ability to use the default footprint that's automatically with this application and the default footprint is your basic standard contact form footprint. What's that footprint? Let me show you here. So this right here is the default contact form footprint. So when you scrape Google.com using the setting in PygonBot of keywords with footprints, you're telling Google to search for the keyword along with the footprint. And you'll notice how the results have now changed, mainly going to contact links. Now, is our default footprint the best one for scraping? No, not necessarily for whatever you're trying to accomplish. It could be. Um, a lot of times people find that making customized footprints are better. Uh, I've just taken the liberty here to uh, write out a few different custom footprints that you may use if you're looking for contact pages. Uh, maybe you're not even looking for com contact pages. Maybe you're, you know, scraping for other reasons or other data. But if you were looking for contact pages, um, you know, here's some other footprints that you could use as well. And if you wanted to use a footprint that was different than the default one in PygonBot, you would have to uh, first add your footprint by clicking this button. You'll choose the file, a text file of what your footprints are. They should be separated uh, uh, one footprint per line and then you'll have to click down here to change this to use custom footprints now let's say let's, let, let me show you really quickly how changing a footprint can change your results so I have the default footprint in the search query you see what the search results are first result is seoradar.com now I'm going to change it just to this. 
and you see now the search results have dramatically changed. So there's different results in, in, in this specific query than was in the last one. So you may have a really good reason for, for wanting to change your footprints, uh, get different websites to be more targeted. Uh, you can add other uh, search uh, operators or quote unquote footprints. Uh, for example, you can add in like, for example, a word must exist on the text of a body. So you would use uh, the footprint of in text and then you would put whatever word that you want um, it to look for in the search results. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. But anyways, when you're scraping Google, Google is probably the most strict search engine to scrape. Uh, especially since they've deployed this reCAPTCHA uh, service to, to essentially moderate search queries to make sure it's not automated search queries that are coming in and harvesting details. Now, PyCombot does have the ability when you're scraping Google.com where you can manually solve these CAPTCHAs. Now, reCAPTCHA is notorious for, for being a little problematic, um, you know, being difficult at times. Uh, the reCAPTCHA goes beyond just actually solving the CAPTCHA. They actually tra track like mouse movements, things like that. So it's important, you know, that if you're going to sit there uh, and solve CAPTCHAs, uh, it is possible for you to get a lot of results, but it, it may take you a little bit of time. Uh, the best alternative for scraping Google.com uh, would essentially be to just use a crap ton of really good private dedicated proxies um, and set up a throttle uh, let the throttle uh, uh, be, be, be between 30 uh, seconds to maybe 180 seconds um, and just let it scrape a little bit more slowly uh, slow and steady wins the race you know as they say but you're you're gonna need a lot of proxies if you want to do a really deep bulk scraping of Google like in the tens of thousands hundreds of thousands you'll need hundreds of proxies to do that uh, but uh, it can be done. We've done it. We've demonstrated in videos multiple times um, to, to show you that it can be done. It does take a little bit of time kind of uh, learning uh, what are effective keywords uh, in, in footprints uh, to scrape the most results along with the patience of just dealing with Google and how difficult it can be with, with, with scraping. Now, a lot of people are really happy because we've added these other search engines like Yahoo.com, Bing, AOL, Yellow Pages, etc. But um, I did want to mention that all of these are going to give you different results, um, even though they work a little bit differently. Uh, footprints may work in some of these ser search engines and may not work in other search engines. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, uh, let me use AOL.com. So... I'm going to take this exact same keyword that we used, SEO companies, and we're going to search. So you see the results, but now if we add a footprint to it, you'll see that it doesn't actually work in AOL.com. So AOL.com won't search with a keyword and a footprint. You'll have to scrape using this option down here of scrape keyword no footprint whenever you want to scrape from AOL.com. Um, and then you can scan you know, for contact pages or whatever and then re-upload and re-scan again uh, to have the best filtering you know, to find the contact pages that you're looking for. But if you want to scrape AOL.com, you have to use the scrape keyword no footprint scan option because it doesn't support keywords with footprints. Um, Yahoo.com actually works really similar to um, Google.com as far as footprints go. And uh, Yahoo has actually become one of my, my favorite uh uh, search engines to scrape because it's it's really easy. Uh, none of these other search engines work on uh, uh, such a strict IP basis like Google. Like Google will, re will require you know tons of proxies to be able to scrape you know hundreds of thousands of websites. Whereas Yahoo, um, they actually limit search uh, scraping or search um, uh, parsing by the bandwidth 
of uh, the IP address. I personally was able to scrape, you know, over 200,000 results with just one IP address scraping yahoo.com search engine. But uh, let me show you that the footprints here um, work almost exactly the same as they do in, and uh, I'm going to use the default one here because uh, you know if it works with the default one, it, it's going to work in general. Um, but you'll see that uh, you'll have your results here and it, they work perfectly fine. So when you're scraping yahoo.com, you'll be able to scrape both with the option sc scraping with no footprint, but you can also scrape with the option keywords with footprints. Uh, now let's go over a little bit about Bing.com. Uh, Bing.com uh, footprints do work in Bing, but they aren't necessarily the same footprints that work in Google and Yahoo, for example, won't necessarily work in Bing. And uh, I'll show you here a little demonstration of this. I'll put uh, SEO companies here as the um, query and you'll see the results come up just fine and I'm gonna add the full contact form footprint to it and you'll see that eh, no results found but let's not give up here if I take out let's let's see if I take out a portion of this footprint if it will work up oh, didn't even work for that uh, so let me try taking out I'll just take out all of this and we'll just use this oh so you see results came up for this footprint and so when you're using a uh, excuse me when you're using bing.com just just be aware that the footprints may uh, work or they may not it's just one of those things where you're gonna kinda wanna actually play around in your browser just like I am right now with the footprints to see what works now if you have to use a customized footprint uh, again I showed you how that works just by adding the footprints and then choosing custom footprints on here and then checking that box scrape with custom footprints so that's how all of that works it's, it's really simple uh, Bing also is not that strict with uh, proxies like google.com uh, you can scrape a, a really long ways in Bing uh, without uh, it ever switching proxies um, what I do uh, I know in previous videos I've told people to turn off the throttle with the current scraping methods um, now I'm telling people to actually use the throttle a little bit uh, with yahoo.com I kind of found a, a pretty sweet spot of having a throttle between uh, three to five seconds and uh, I would just change this to three and this to five and then it would make it scrape every three to five seconds that seemed to be uh, work really well uh, without hitting their bandwidth limits on my queries and I was able to scrape for days really deep in, in, into the search engines so anyways that's that's a pretty cool thing uh, now let me talk a little bit about yellowpages.com uh, that uh, search engine is uh, pretty cool you'll notice when you select this specific option you'll get a little pop-up prompt and it's essentially just giving you the directions of how to work it uh, the first thing that you'll have to do after you choose yellowpages.com is you'll have to add your footprints and again that's just by clicking this green button here adding the file that that contains the footprints and in the case of yellowpages.com the footprints are your cities so you're gonna have a list of cities that you will be um, uploading to them so for example if you wanted to look for plumbers let's say in Seattle Washington uh, you would have your footprint file um, just say just that and uh, let me see here a second I'm gonna actually save this and then um, you would put your keyword plumbers up here uh, anyways have a great day and keep on keeping on